Blackface uh, started with the traditional minstrel shows in the 1830s, 1840s, primarily in the northeastern part of the country. Uh, the shows became really, really popular. Uh, a lot of artists really made their career doing blackface. Uh, and in the period after uh, the Civil War ended, uh, those shows moved to other parts of the country, primarily uh, to, the, to the South and to the Midwest. And those performances took place in a variety of different theaters. And eventually, um, you know, one of the more famous uh, blackface uh, shows was Jumpin' Jim Crow is where the name uh, for Jim Crow segregation comes from, a famous minstrel show. Well, you know, people question whether blackface is, is, is always racist or not. My opinion is it's always racist because it's done uh, with the level of intention uh, to disparage black people. It's done to demean uh, the way we look. Uh, you know, it, it's not just people putting shoe polish on their faces, but uh, they, they use so-called black vernacular when they talk. Uh, they, they move their bodies in a very specific way, trying to mock black people. So it's always done to mock black people. And I don't think that you can mock black people without it being racist. When you have the governor of the state of Virginia uh, and the Attorney General of the State of Virginia both being implicated in some way with using blackface. You know, the governor uh, said initially that those those photographs we saw, that he was in it, then he said, no, it wasn't. Then he admitted that, oh, yeah, well, I did use some, some shoe polish on my face to pretend to be Michael Jackson. And obviously the Attorney General came out and said that he had used uh, blackface. You know, I, I think that from my perspective, uh, I don't see how you can govern a state uh, and be a person who thought it was okay to use blackface at any point during the course of your life. You know, people are saying, well, that was a long time ago, that was 1980, but listen, man, this isn't 1880, this was 1980. Uh, he should have known better. People are, are wondering why in, in 2019 we're still having incidents like this. And I tell people it's a very simple answer. We've always had these incidents. They've never stopped. It's not as if they went away. You know, we, we like to tell ourselves we're in a post-racial America, but, but practically every year around Halloween, I see something on my news feed uh, where there's a party at some college uh, where, where some white students are dressed up in blackface. So it's, it's part and parcel of the way blacks have been uh, represented in a very ugly way for, you know, a, a very long period of time. It's not something that's easily gotten rid of. Uh, I think that there are people that, um, that believe that it's not offensive to blacks, or at least they've convinced themselves it's not, so they don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, but I, I tell people um, that we can expect to continue to see incidents like this because it's part of, of the mindset that many whites in the country have about blacks that, you know, we should mock them, that, that they're ugly, that, that in, in some way, shape, or form we have this power to bully them uh, into accepting that this is how we, we see them. Well, America's Black Color Cross Museum has always, uh, you know, wanted to talk to people about these very difficult topics. This topic of blackface obviously is something that people want to have conversations about. Uh, you know, as we move forward uh, with the museum reopening in a few months, uh, I'm sure that one of the things we'll have is some conversations about this topic and engage people in conversations about uh, why these things are so problematic, why they're still being created to this day. Really just engage people in conversation to show them that, you know, that there's a lot to this, a lot of history behind it. We're really engaging people in an understanding of how hurtful these things are uh, because the people who do it, you know, they can, they can wipe the black face off and go back to living their regular life. They can make an apology if they get caught, but the people who are victimized by it, the people who are hurt, they have to live with that hurt, you know, for months and years on end. So uh, just simply issuing an apology isn't enough, and we want to be part of uh, engaging people in conversations to avoid these things happening moving forward.